Uh, it's Mr. Kanyele once more with Visual X Masterclass. We're doing the topic called uh, Data Handling of Statistics. I want us how, how they set this, this section in examinations. This was question 9 in November 2008. It says, a time taken in minutes to complete a 5 kilometer race by a group of 10 runners is given below. A time taken in minutes to complete a five kilometer race by a group of runners is given below. So one runner took 18 minutes to complete a race, another 21, another 16, 24, 28, 20, 22, 29, 19, and 23. Remember we were told that these runners are 10. You can just check whether these times made are 10 as well. It's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Then everything is captured. What is the first question? Calculate the mean time taken to complete the race. Remember what is the mean? Mean is nothing else but the average. So we are looking to find the average time taken by this group of 10 runners to complete this race. What is the symbol for, 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 for mean or for average? It is x bar. x bar is equals to the sum of all the observations divided by the number of them. This then will be equals to the sum. You add all this. You said it's 18 plus 21 plus 16 plus 28 and so on and so forth then you'll divide that by 10. However you can do that manually you add this you add this you add this you add this just put them in the calculator quickly they are 10 you add it to divide it by uh, 10 let's 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 do it it's 18 21 16 24 28 plus 20 plus 22 plus 29 plus 19 plus 23 you divide this by 10 and you'll find that your x bar will be equals to 22 minutes so the average time taken by these runners is 22 minutes but you don't have to waste time by doing all that you can simply go and say x bar i'm showing you the other way x bar our x bar is equals to the sum of the first one what is the first one it is 18 plus add all of them up until the last one which is of course 23 divided by 10 then you say x bar is equals to you push this in a calculator how do you do that using a calculator uh, number one you take you put your calculator in a setup mode you go you go to setup mode because we're doing statistics you will push number two which is statistics in this particular case and what are we doing you are doing number one which is called the variance var you go in whatever calculator that we are using you go to where we have var which is number one in this particular case you press number one then there's a column in this first part of, of steps you'll see only one column you see there are numbers on the left hand side one two three and so on it tells us whether we've completed all the data that we're supposed to, comp to, 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 to enter there. The first data given, the first time uh, taken by the first runner is 18 minutes. So you push 18, 1, 18, you enter your data through equal sign. It will move down to the second data, which is 21. 21, you enter. The third data is 16, 16, you enter. The fourth data is 24, 24, you enter. The fifth data is 28, 28, you enter. Followed by 20 and 22, 20, you enter. 22, you enter. What is the next one? 29 and 19, 29, you enter. 19, you enter. Uh, what is the last one? 23. 23, you enter. What is important are the if, uh, uh, numbers on the left hand side. They should indicate the number of data that you've entered. You can see that you've entered 10 data and the last one was 23. Once that is done, 
half the battle is, is won. Uh, after this, you don't press on. Because once you press on, all the data will go. But you press AC. After pressing AC, you go to stats mode. How do I go to, to statistics? The one that is here, I've got to shift first and go to stats. It will tell me what do I want. I want a uh, variance in this particular case, which is number four. I go to VAR, which is number four. It will take me exactly to what I'm looking for. Right, what is it that we're looking for? We're looking for that number two, which is X bar. You simply press two in your calculator and it will press equal sign. It will give you the time taken, the average time taken by these runners, which is 22 minutes. So that's how you go about doing it using a calculator. Whether we use a calculator or not, you come back to the same time, which is 22 minutes. So this is exactly the same as that. When you do it manually or you do it using a calculator, I suggest that you simply use a calculator because you might need this data which is already uh, entered in your calculator. 9.2, 9.1, remember what is it that we are doing? We are calculating the mean time taken to complete the race. Which we find that these 10 runners, their average time taken to complete the race was 22 minutes. The next question is calculate the standard deviation. This is the formula for the standard deviation. You get it in the formula sheet. Let's respond to it. Then my standard deviation is equal to the sum of how many runners in this particular case. There are, there are 10. We'll be starting to calculate from the first runner what is the first time taken by runner number one? Runner number one took 18 minutes minus what is our standard deviation? This is our, our, our what is our exponential, our average, our mean. Our mean was 22 minutes in this particular case. So it's minus 22. You square that, you add the second one. What is the second time taken by these runners? The first one was 18. The second time is 21. So it's 21. In fact, you don't even have to show the second time. You can even go and show the last one. What is the last time? It is 23. So it's plus 23 uh, minus x bar, which is 22. This is squared. This is all over n, which is 10 in this particular case. You, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping all this one to save time in the exams because I'm going to use the calculator. Now let, let's go how do you find the standard deviation using a calculator. Remember that the, the data has already been stored. It is vitally important that once you store your data here, if you are going to use it in the next question, do not press the on sign. Do not press on. You, if you want to cancel, you can just only press AC rather than on. I'll suggest you press AC then on. Now, now that we've put our data here, you go straight to, 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 to shift. And then you go to stats, which is number one in this particular case. We've got number one, number two, number three, number two, number four. You go to variance. You just look for VAR in this particular case. You look for VAR, which is variance in this particular case. VAR is number four. You go to number four, you press number four. What is it that we're looking for now? We're looking for standard deviation. You look for the sign for the standard deviation in this particular case, which is number three. Then you press three. It will give you the answer. Press equal sign. Ah, 3,949. You can just write 3,95. Correct two decimal places. So our standard deviation in this particular case will be uh, 3, 95. This will be our standard deviation in this particular case. So that's how you go about using a calculator to calculate the standard deviation. Thank you. Right, I want us to move to the third uh, part of this question paper, which says, remember the first one, we were calculating our X bar, which is our average, we got it to be 22 minutes. Then the next question was calculate the standard deviation, and we know how to calculate the standard deviation using our calculator. Then the third question is asking us how many runners completed the race within one standard deviation. 
Now the question is, some learners don't understand which region is that when we talk about within one solar deviation. Let's make an example. If you look at the normal distributive curve, uh, let, let's have it here. Oh, I'll try and do it here. This is what we call a normal distributive curve. If you have here, yeah, this part from top here, we'll call that the average. That's where the X bar will be. In a normal situation, hence the normal distributive curve, in a normal situation, uh, about 34%. Suppose you are writing a test in a class. This is at 50%. You go uh, to those that are passing very well this side. You'll be going to the negative side to those that are failing. The, 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 this curve says about 34% of learners must get between 50 and 60% in a test and about another 34 percent of learners must get between 50 and 40 percent so you move from this position to there which is from 50 to 60 about 34 learners, percent of learners must be getting between 50 and 60 and on the negative side about 34 percent of learners must be getting between 50 and 40. the next section is will be here we are saying about uh, 14% of learners in this class must be able to get between 60 and 70% of the test. And even this side as well, another 14% must be getting between 40 and 20%. And only 2% of learners only 2% must be getting between 0 and 20%. It should be 20% those learners that are hopeless in the class. And those that are high flyers that are getting between 80 and 100 must also be 2% if the situation is normal. Hence we call this a normal distributive curve. And if you add all this percentage, you'll come to 100%. Now, in other words, if the class is normal, if you've taught well as an educator, you should be getting between 60 and 70 percent pass rate. Those that are getting uh, uh, between 50, uh, 40 and 60, they must be 60 to 70 percent of the class. Then you say that is normal. 14 percent must be getting between uh, 60 and 70, 2 percent must be high flyers. Or the same thing happens to this side, to the negative side. Now, from here to here, I'm moving once. Are we together? From here to here, I'm deviating away from the main once. From here to here, I'm deviating away from the main twice. From here to here, I'm deviating away from the mean once. From here to here, I'm deviating away from the mean twice. Now the question is, how many runners completed the race within one standard deviation? I want to explain that. To deviate is to move from this point to this point once. That is what we mean by one standard deviation. Now you deviate away from the mean, from the average. So this is where my average is. So if I move this side, I'm deviating once. So this is 1SD, 1SD. So this will be 2SD. But uh, our syllabus ends with 1SD. So this is 1SD. So this will be 2SD. So if you deviate away from the mean once, this is the region. This is one standard deviation towards positive. This is one standard deviation towards negative. So this is the region that is within one standard deviation. This region here. From here to here, I've deviated once on negative. From here to here, I've deviated once on positive. So how do we write that? We are saying X bar, I deviate once towards uh, the negative and from S X bar I will add I will deviate once toward positive 
standard deviation. So this is the region which we refer to it as within one standard deviation. If it was within two, it was going to be there. But the question talks about within one standard deviation. At times they will ask us, the runners that accumulated the race outside one standard deviation, you'll be looking at outside. But this particular one, talk about uh, runners that completed the race within one standard deviation. Now this formula becomes very important. This is the formula which is not in the formula sheet that you use to calculate the number of uh, runners that completed the race within one standard deviation. Now let's answer the question. The question says how many runners while looking for the number of runners. We know that it should be about uh, 68 to 70 percent, 60 to 70 percent in actual fact, the runners. What is 60% of 10? 60% of 10 will be about 6 runners. So the answer must be between 6 and 7 runners. So I do this question with, with the end in mind. I do have an idea being assisted by my normal distributive curve because I know that within one standard division is in this region where it's between 60 and 70% of runners. All right, let's do it. Let's do it and check what solution do we get. So this is equals to... Uh, what is my x bar? My x bar is 22, my standard deviation is 3. That becomes important. My x bar is 22, my standard deviation is 3. So wherever there is x bar, I push that value. In this particular case, it is 22 minus. What is SD? What is standard deviation? In this particular case, it is 3,95. Is 2. x bar, which is 22 plus now 3,95 this then will be let's find that region uh, 18,05 and 25,95 if you add must subtract this it will be 18,05 is 2 uh, what is the other one quickly it's 25,95 it is 25 comma 95 just push this in the calculator we yeah, add 2 plus 3 it's 25 comma 95 this is the region which is we, we refer to it as within one standard deviation uh, the question is how many runners uh, completed the race within one standard deviation then our solution is are those runners that made this time the time that is above 18,05 and less than 25,95 those are the times that uh, will fall within one standard deviation now the question was not looking for times was just looking for the number of runners let's check those runners come with me uh, look at this time 18 minutes let's look at this runner who made 18 minutes remember this was given in the question does this runner fall within this range between 18,5 and 25 no this one was below 18,05 so this one is not part of our solution let's look at the next runner the next runner uh, made 21 minutes is 21 minutes between 18,5 and 22,95? Yes, it is between those times. So this is the first runner that completed the race within one standard deviation. Let's look at the second runner. It is 16. 16 is below 18,5, so it's not part of the solution. 24, yes, it is within 18 and 25, so this is part of the solution. 28 is not, it's above 25. 20, yes, it's within. 22, yes, it is within. 29, it's not. 19, yes it is within, 23, yes it is within. Now let's calculate, let's count the number of runners that completed the race within one standard deviation. It is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That's how you respond to this question. How many runners completed within the race within one standard deviation? Therefore, there are 6 runners that that completed the race within one standard deviation. The total number of runners that complicated the race within one standard deviation was just six. Thank you.